Okay, so hotels. These things aren't going away anytime soon, and hotels, in my opinion, are probably one of the best stocks out there to buy. I mean, obviously, you guys could buy Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and QQQ, and overall the NASDAQ, but do you guys really want to buy into companies that have already hit all-time highs and are like up in a brand new high price? Probably not. Investors are looking at stuff that are still oversold, but good companies. So let's talk about some hotel stocks that are way oversold, major discounts, so let's get right to it. So first thing first is Sunshine Hotel Investors. Not that many people own this on Robinhood. Less than 600 people even know about this. SHO is their ticker name. And Sunshine Hotel Investors, over the course of five years, it doesn't really see much of a major growth. But it should be worth at least $13 to $14. Currently, it's at $9.77. If you buy in, you could at least you know go up to $13.50, maybe even $14. So all your shares maybe go on something else because Sunshine Hotel Investors, after $13, $15, it's not going to go up any further more. So if you check out their dividend yield is 7.58%. So pretty much if you guys want a dividend portfolio, you came to the right spot because SHO is by far one of the best dividend hotels out there. But keep in mind that they're more of a REIT than anything else. They don't actually own any hotel buildings. They're like you watching this video wanting to buy hotel stocks. They buy stocks in major hotel brands like Marriott, Hilton, MGM for example, stuff like that. And they have a ton of different categories. So long story short, they're pretty much like a regular Wall Street investor, but they have a lot more money and they buy hotels only. And this is why they're called Sunshine Hotel Investors. And by the way, dividends of over 7%, that's kind of hard to pass up, especially how it's way oversold right now. Next up is the famous Marriott International. This is a Marriott Hotel. These guys are really big. And keep in mind that Marriott Hotels, it's more than just a Marriott Hotel brand. But they also have the Ritz-Carlton, the Bulgari Hotels and Resorts, W Hotels. They got like West End. They got Courtyard. They got Four Points. All these are really popular and major Manhattan hotspots, major Chicago hotspots, Miami, LA, major cities around the world. And also Marriott in China has been booming. It's been doing really, really well. Even though these hotels are pretty cheap in China, but keep in mind that they fill up extremely fast. And a lot of these major Chinese hotels with Marriott in them, they do exceptionally well with a lot of you know Chinese people in China. They've been making a lot of money lately. Upper class, middle class have been growing, and Marriott is expanding really aggressively in China. Open up luxury and expensive hotels, and you might be wondering, do those get filled up or not? They get filled up quicker than ever. The thing about China is if there's anything that's good, anything that's associated with luxury, people love it and people want it. And this is why so many different of these hotel companies are trying to take a major jab in the Chinese market. And if you watch some videos on CNBC, Wall Street Journal, they actually show you there's a lot of brand new luxury hotels popping up in China. It's growing faster than me growing tomato plants in my backyard. The amount of these brand new hotels opening up is pretty insane and the thing about mario hotels is they're pretty healthy they have operating of 2,000 properties franchises about 4,700 hotels and the brand is associated with business it's really nice and so far look at the quarterly earnings they're not really catered to like one specific quarter obviously the summertime it does do better but throughout the years it has always been pretty stable they're not like purely like a vacation stock they're not really like a vacation hotel type of guy. They're more of like catering to the local businessman, like just regular families that travel year round. And this is why their overall chart just looks so stable because during the summertime, the fall, spring, the winter time, they're in other locations as well. Like during the winter time, you could go to Europe or go to Asia and there's Marriott hotels over there waiting for you. And fun fact, Marriott hotels controls roughly 15% of the market share for hotels in the United States. So yeah, put that in your brain. That is insane. So next up is MGM Resorts. So MGM Resorts is really good due to the fact that it pretty much caters to vacation hotspots. This is very different from Marriott International where it just builds hotel buildings in major cities, not necessarily major vacation areas. Whereas MGM Resorts only builds hotels in huge vacation areas. They have a smaller market cap compared to Marriott, but of course they do have some pretty good properties as well. And once again, a lot of these major companies are way oversold. 
and there's a lot of meme worthy people buying in gym resorts on Robinhood. Some people buy in for the meme, some people buy in because it's generally a good stock. In my opinion, with a 2.82% dividend yield and such a nice five year chart, I say it's a pretty good investment for you guys to hop in. So the thing about MJ Resorts is it's pretty baller due to the fact that it does have several hotels, but they're most likely located in major casino areas and also the Las Vegas location. So the thing about this is if you look at MJ Resorts, the earnings are a little bit different compared to Marriott due to the fact that if you see quarter three, quarter two are exceptionally way better than quarter one, quarter four due to the fact that you don't really go to Las Vegas in the middle of the winter. You don't really go to Las Vegas in the spring. You go to Las Vegas in the summer and you party every single day. If you see quarter one, it gets really bad due to the fact that not that many people are staying in major hotels in Las Vegas and other major resorts out there. And this is why MGM Resorts has taken a huge hit. But of course, it has recovered really well. They have money. Las Vegas is slowly opening up. So definitely check them out. And so far, they have a lot of restaurants, casinos. They make a lot of money. And the thing about Las Vegas is it's fun. You don't really want to leave that place. It's just like a lot of really good memories for a lot of people. And so far, the whole reason why they're so successful is because they cater to the heavy vacation hotspots like you know Las Vegas, the Strip. People love that stuff. And this is why MGM would never go away. And the fact that they own so many of those hotels in these casino areas, they make bank. So next up is Hilton Worldwide. Now, fun fact about Hilton, Bill Ackman, after making the really brilliant trade of $27 million to $2.7 billion, he used some of the earnings and some of the gains to buy Hilton Worldwide stock. He actually has a pretty decent stake in HLT. So have 5,600 properties and most of them are franchise so that is pretty good they don't really have to manage it that much but they're launching a bunch of brand new brands like Moto and LXR and so far they've been expanding aggressively more aggressive than any other hotel brand out there due to the fact that it does have access to many different countries check out the hotels they're pretty good if you go to China and ask people about Hilton they associate that with luxury and so far if you look at Hilton China it's actually really insane because they have been opening up Chinese hotels more and more than ever before. You can see these hotels are considered more expensive. Over $100 in China equivalents to about 700 RMB. 700 RMB is pretty expensive for a family and a lot of rich people are really enjoying these major hotels in China, especially how people are making a lot more money over there. Middle class, upper class, they're growing super fast. What happens then? You go on vacation. What do you do at vacations? You stay at a nice hotel. So overall, Hilton has been doing pretty good. The five-year chart is absolutely phenomenal. It's at over $100 before the virus. But I really do feel like the market cap should increase once the Chinese really solidifies, once China stabilizes from the virus and people start vacationing in the summer, Hilton hotels will be doing really well. And they actually perform really well in quarter two, quarter three. And so far, they're more of a vacation hotspot stock than anything else. So they have thousands of developments under the pipeline for now and the future. And most of them are in China. And they want to be making a huge presence over there. And hey, I don't blame them. China is a really big marketplace. You can make a lot of cash. Next up is Intercontinental Hotels. They do really well, especially the IPO opened at $40. If you grab it right now, you're pretty much grabbing it at the IPO price. The peak was at like almost $70, but of course I really do feel like IGH is pretty good. They're smaller, you can see the market cap is way smaller than the other ones. The dividend yield is 2.38%. If you look at IHG, they're really awesome due to the fact that it's pretty attractive when you sign up with a credit card, go own you know, get up to four times bonus points. And so far, they're everywhere in major hotspot locations. A lot of people really do feel like IHG is associated with like cheap luxury. It's pretty awesome. And the resorts and hotels they have are newer and they're more fresher. You can see, you can register one of their cards. You get a lot of bonus points. I'm actually really tempted to get one of these cards because that equivalents to like $1,400, which is a lot of money simply just from signing up for a card. But so far, they're doing really awesome. And IHG just went public very recently. They're not like a super big hotel brand, but they do own over 5,000 hotels over 100 countries and they're really called international hotels and I really do feel like they live up to the name and so far they purchased other major companies and they operate in a lot of different locations 
And pretty much if you go around the world and talk about IHG, people know about this. If you're the traveler that goes everywhere in the world, you probably have stayed in one of these IHG hotels. Next up is Hyatt. So this one is also even smaller at $5.65 billion, but the five-year chart is absolutely phenomenal. It used to be around $88, $90. It's $56 right now. Dividend yield is 1.38%. If you look at Hyatt, they're really balling, especially how they really have a really amazing international presence. United States, Canada, some parts of South America, Europe, and so far they're doing really, really well and they're making a lot of money. Asia is one of their biggest areas that they want to attack. And so far, China, they have some of the most beautiful hotels and Park Hyatt is really awesome. If you guys been to 157 in New York City, it's pretty packed there. You can see they have a lot of hotels in New England states and also the East Coast. Not really that much in the West Coast, but they're pretty much everywhere in virtually every single European country. And Hyatt Hotels, in my opinion, has one of the best five-year graphs I've ever seen. I really do feel like Hyatt should be worth at least $70. Right now, it's $56, so it's a perfect chance to buy. Keep in mind that a lot of these hotel brands are really oversold and I could never really find a good hotel ETF in general. So the best thing to do is diversify, maybe even buy one share of each of these companies. And they used to be super expensive, but now since the virus, this is the perfect time to buy these hotel brands. They could never get it before. So this is honestly like a once in a decade opportunity. You don't really get these major chances to buy these hotel stocks at such a cheap price. That's about it. Thanks for watching.